All right, guys, so I've tried to figure out how to explain this to you guys in a very straightforward kind of way. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a quick little tips video, guys, on how to set your men up in a direction where you're going to have a nobility, where it's going to be easier for you in the Calredian realm as far as your nobility and your respect and your renown and all of that's going to work and how lords are going to communicate with you, other kings, and uh, so on and so forth. So with all that, let's just jump into a start a new game. We'll get into the settings, guys, and all of these choices that are coming up and kind of explain. So we just want to continue at first. We're going to pick a male because we just don't want to deal with that female uh it's just there's a lot of controversy with the with the female and the nobility and all of that so that would just blow this video all apart so we're going to pick a male and we're going to pick the top slot guys we're going to be a noble we're also going to be a page at a noble's court we're also going to be a squire because why not that's not going to hurt our no no our background as far as our nobility goes it's just going to track us back to being involved in the political realm of things even at a young age honestly i don't think it really matters which one of these you pick it's going to affect your stats in a, in a slight little way i always just kind of go for lust for money and power or wonderless we'll go for lust for money and power what the hell this time Become an adventurer and ride to your destiny. Yes, we are. Now, because we picked all of the top categories, guys, and trust me, I know anybody can just pick all of the top categories. We'll, we'll get to the skill points in a second and the attribute points and charisma and leadership and all of that. Uh, and that's what's going to lead up to it. But anyway, we get a free banner. I always just kind of usually go with that one. I usually go with this just because I'm doing videos guys so if I get in the jam don't exactly want it to go that way because it's just gonna ruin everything by anywho uh, so now we can look our stats over guys from when we just made all those choices as you guys can see I'm a big pansy when it comes to getting hit by a sword because I have zero iron flesh right now we're pretty low it's it's hurting guys our power strike, however, is at three. So we do know how to swing a sword. Or we can hit pretty hard with a sword, but we can't get hit with a sword. But if you guys notice, our charisma is above average. Our intelligence isn't bad. I think that was for the power and lust selection, because I think if you pick Wonderless, you'll be set at five, I want to say. <laughs> Our strength and our agility is not bad. It's not bad. And we will get to that later in the game. You will get to that. Don't worry about it right now. <clears throat> you're going to pop stuff into intelligence and charisma right now. And you're going to start laying out these skill points and filling this in. Now watch here. We're going to... What do we have? Four. So we're going to put this up to ten at least. Let's see. And then we'll go intelligence. Intelligence. And let's try to put it up to 11. Okay. It didn't raise my leadership, but it's already at 3. And when I pop a... When we level up for our first time, which will be like after your first battle, guys, you'll be able to just put this at 12. This will probably go up to 4. I think, in fact, it does. Then we can choose this again. Leadership, guys. Leadership raises the maximum amount of troops that you can have under your command. So if you want a bigger army, you're wondering why you don't have a bigger army. It's because your leadership skills are very low. So you want them a little bit. You want to keep working at this. Honestly, you want to put a lot into this. Now, as far as the nobility and the political realm of things go, guys, you want to put more into persuasion as much as you possibly can. Two isn't shit. I think I'm at three only right now, and I'm doing all right. So each one is significant in a very small way, but if we read Persuasion, guys, this skill helps you make other people accept your point of view. Underline that first sentence right there, guys, because that... With, with leadership, with persuasion, uh, with your charisma, with a no, noble past, with you 
running for heir of king, um, with you having your own faction. Now we're talking about having your own faction in the future, guys. When you're trying to recruit recruit lords, uh, can't talk. Recruit lords. All of these need to be at a respectable progression, basically. You you want to have points in these to where lords are just going to be more persuaded to come to your side. You may even open up some uh, extra dialogue, maybe, options. So let's just go ahead and we'll put our name in here. We'll just, we'll just put this. It may say I already have it in there, but we'll see. We'll distribute all of the points. We want to at least get one or so into Iron Flesh. I always want to put one into Pathfinding so we're not too slow. Tactics, every two levels increases starting battle advantage. It's not a bad thing to have. Also, these next ones, Engineer, First Aid, Surgery, Wound Treatment, guys, these, these four right here are important. This is going to help you with Sieging. This is going to help you with regain 5% of your hit points lost during mission. So we'll so basically, after a battle, you'll bounce back 5% of you of a certain, uh, what your level's at, I think. <clears throat> Alright. Surgery. Surgery is going to help your men not die, but maybe get just knocked out. So if this is higher, you'll get knocked out rather than die. Alright, wound treatment. It's going to help your men increase by 20% of your skill, the level of your skill, guys. On healing so you're gonna heal quicker and everything pathfinding party map speed is increased by 3% per skill level so each time you put a point into this guys 3% by your skill level it's gonna increase your speed out on the field it's good to be able to catch people it's also good to be able to outrun them tactics every two levels of this skill increases battle or starting battle advantage by one meaning when you're on the field in a battle maybe even during a siege you'll have a slight bit more of an advantage on the field maybe maybe you won't have so many mountains in your way maybe uh, you'll be on the right side of the river you know leave it for your experience uh, trainer guys somebody just asked me a question the other day and I referred to this skill trait but if you up your trainer guys you'll level your men up a lot quicker um, I think he was asking something about uh, uh, recruiting lords though and I totally botched the uh, answer on that I was talk talking about trainer <laughs> but uh, charisma leadership that's that's going to increase persuasion that's going to increase your chances of attracting lords to your faction guys also and i've stressed this plenty of times after a battle with an opposing lord you've won the battle you've captured them as prisoner let them go if you keep them yes you can get the what three to five thousand dollars that may may be offered for their ransom before the two factions join peace again and then you just don't have the option anymore so just let them go get that honor you'll get that likeness from that lord down the road he'll be a candidate possibly to be recruited as one of your lords and he'll already like you even if you guys fight against each other each time you let him go guys he's gonna like you a little more finally they just become loyal to you i think the crumpe or however you pronounce his name in the last episode, guys, when we approached him, he was the Lord of Bari under the Sultan's uh, Sultan's faction. And because of our level of renown, respect, and likeness, uh, leadership, the fact that we had a strong army, the fact that he felt more comfortable in our companion's company than his own, he had grievances with Hakim. All of these in a combination, guys, is why he easily decided to come to our side. And we got Bari out of the deal, too. So, like I said, that happens sometimes. You'll gain the Lord's property. They're still, so to speak, the Lords of that uh, castle. But you'll get the rent. You'll have the property, I believe. All right, so I think 
guys. That's pretty, everything else is pretty self-explanatory, like Weapon Master, that's going to come through Agility, guys, so if you want Weapon Master to get up there pretty good, you're going to have to put some into Agility. It's hard when you only get one attribute point at a time. It takes a little while, and I'm just talking about, like, the first part of the game, guys, like, say I'm at level 1 right now, so 10 level ups, 15 level ups from now, really just focus on that leadership, persuasion, that charisma, the intelligence, utilize those two skill points that you get a piece for hitting intelli intelligence. Alright, so we're just going to progress it all, put the points in, yada yada, looks good, because we're just going to, now we're going to pick our faction, it, it doesn't matter, it's a preference thing, what do you, what faction do you want to serve under, that's basically you want to pick the one that you want to, you're thinking you might want to serve on there. Usually I always just go with Swadia just because they're right in the middle of the map. So I can just kind of branch out whatever direction I want to. And they fight pretty much every faction because they're in the middle of the map. So that's convenient as well. You don't really see the Nords and the Serenids go at it too much. Or the Kyrgyz and the Nords go at it too much. Because they're just not close enough to each other. And they may not have the resources to travel that far. Yes, this game can be realistic to somewhat of an extent. I mean, they're running out of food, they're out of food, so. Just gonna merc this guy real quick, guys. Yeah, all Okay, we're pretty weak. <laughs> I mean, we still have a power strike of three, so it's what have you. I have to talk to him before we can back out of this. But now, I can back out of that. We're just going to return back to the main menu because that's pretty much going to be the whole tips video. So I hope this helps a little bit, guys. Like I said, anybody can select the top choices, but select the top choices if you want a path of mobility. Because this is what this video is about. Not a strength build, not an agility build, but a nobility build, if you will. So just follow that method. You should be fine. Remember to put your points into leadership. Persuasion, Charisma, and Intelligence. Don't worry about Strength and Agility right now. You don't need a level 4 horse when you're only at level 12. Work on your Nobility. Work on the Lords when you're out there running the fields. You're talking to them. After battles, you're talking to them. You're opening up dialogue. You're increasing that likeness. Speak to opposing Lords in different factions. I would recommend that you're not at war with and try to communicate with them and everything. You don't have to go to the feasts, you don't have to do the tournaments, you don't have to get married. Just work on the lords and the kings of the realm, guys, and you'll do just fine. So I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Feel free to subscribe. Definitely can communicate with me directly through my channel in the comments section. I will get back to you as soon as I can with an answer if you have a question or if you just want to chat, what have you. But, as always, until next time, guys, we'll see you later.